Now that we've gone over the fill style in detail, let's move on to the stroke style. By choosing Shape Stroke Style in the selector, we can use the Creation tool to create a path and a stroke style in one step. Stroke Color is the first parameter and it defines the color of the stroke that'll be drawn. Clicking on the square will change the color, but selecting the stroke style will make the same color appear at the top of the viewer, in the top bar. This bar will change according to the current selection. If we add a second stroke style, the selection in the Properties panel will determine the color displayed in the top bar. If we select another stroke style, the color will change according to this selection. Stroke Width defines the thickness of the stroke in pixels. The Scale Stroke Width, which is enabled by default, will multiply the stroke width by the scale of the layer using the Shapes Generator. Remember that while paths and path groups contain their own transform, the layer using the generator also has its own transform. The stroke width will increase or decrease depending on the scale values. Here the scale acts as a multiplier. But if we go back to the stroke style options and disable the scale stroke width, reduce the thickness of the stroke to 25 pixels, and then select the layer again to access its transform parameter, we can reduce the scale value and the thickness will remain unchanged. So the scale value will no longer be used as a multiplier of the stroke width. The next three parameters, start, end, and offset, all work together. The stroke style will draw this line following the curve from the curve's starting point, which is represented by a slightly larger square. Zero represents the beginning of the curve, and one represents the end of the curve. Reducing the end value will draw the curve partially. You can also change the start value to start drawing this curve a little further away from the first point. The offset value is added to the start and end to shift these two points along the curve. Set the start to 0, the end to 0 0.75, and the offset to 1. The order of the points defines the direction of the curve between the start and end. When we created this path, each click added a point to the list, defining an order. But, as seen in previous videos, there are certain tools we can use to change this order. You may remember this tool which lets you define the first point by clicking on one of the points of the curve. The start parameter will then use this first point to start drawing the curve following the same direction. A value of 0 0.75 covers three quarters of the distance. The tool used to open or close the curve will also define a new starting point used by the start and end parameters. But we haven't reversed the direction of the curve yet. To do this, click on this button at the top which will reverse the direction in which the points are defined, as well as the movement along the curve, after animating the start, end, and even the offset. As we change the end value, and it exceeds 1, the drawing of this path will start over, and the entire stroke will be erased. But we can change this by setting the start-end cycling mode from loop to alternate. When the end value exceeds 1, it'll progressively erase the beginning of the curve. So you can create cycles where the curve will appear and disappear also by adjusting the start parameter. So alternate mode is useful for drawing and erasing a path continuously, whereas loop mode will make the path disappear each time you pass 1. Next, there's the start end mode parameter. To understand the purpose of this parameter, we'll need to draw a second path in the same path group, right next to the previous one. Let's switch them back to union mode to make them appear. One of the two paths is completely drawn, while the second is only partially drawn. By adjusting the end parameter, you can see that the drawing of this path will spread over both shapes cumulatively. The stroke will draw these two shapes in sequence according to their order in the path group. Switching to separate paths lets you assign these values to each path individually. 
an end value of 0.5 will draw half of each path. You'll see too that when using the text generator, this will make all of the letters appear separately. Trim path accumulate time offset takes advantage of the fact that by modifying the start and end parameters, we're actually cutting these paths, reducing their length at vector level. When the start and end are animated, we'll be able to apply a time offset to the trim of each of these paths. Bear in mind that this parameter will have an effect if the start, end, or offset are animated. So let's start by going to the beginning of the animation and animating the end parameter with two keyframes that go from 0 to 1. As we move through the timeline, the shapes will be synchronized and drawn progressively. Changing the time offset value will apply a time offset to this animation according to the keyframes that were created to produce it. Setting this parameter to negative 12 will apply a delay of 12 frames before the start of the animation. Remember that right now the evolution of these two paths is synchronized. You can see this more clearly when we switch back to the transform tool and don't have all of the overlays. Now if we enable the accumulate time offset parameter, each path will be offset according to its ID. By setting this value to negative 6, the first path will be delayed by 6 frames, the second by 12 frames, the third by 18 frames, and so on. To better understand this principle, let's duplicate the two existing paths in order to have more paths in the path group. So each path will begin to be drawn 6 frames after the previous path. If we reduce this value, for example to 1 frame, the paths will almost be synchronized. If we increase this value, the delays between the drawing of these paths will be more and more significant. The identifier that multiplies the offset assigned to each path is defined by the order in the path group. This hierarchy is read from top to bottom, so we can define that path 1 was created before path 2, then path 3, then path 4. The reason this list is read top down is because the accumulate distribution parameter is currently set to forward. By switching to backward, this order will be reversed and the list will be read from bottom to top. Shuffle mode, on the other hand, lets you set a random order defined by a seed value. Changing the seed value will give you a completely different order. Determine which shape is drawn first, using one seed value. Now change the seed value and you'll see that a completely different shape will be drawn first. These offset parameters help you to quickly achieve varying and complex animations. Edge draw mode allows you to define the position of the curve in relation to the defined path. In center mode, the stroke is drawn equally on both sides of the path. In inside mode, the original path will be inside the shape drawn by the stroke. In outside mode, the original path will be on the outside. Let's go halfway through the animation to see the end of a stroke. Cap style determines how stroke ends are drawn. Flat will stop the drawing at the trim point. Square will extend the stroke according to the stroke width. And round will produce rounded ends that disappear when the shape closes. Let's switch back to flat mode and look at the join style parameter. To better demonstrate, let's delete these paths and create a rectangular shape. Here we're not using a rectangle generator, but a tool that draws a conventional rectangular path. Note that the stroke style and its animation are completely disassociated from the contents of the path group. Adding or deleting new paths in the path group will produce a completely new animation. By default, MITRE mode will preserve the angles created by the shape in this case, defining right angles. Switching to bevel mode will generate a bevel on the corners of this shape, and round mode will draw rounded shapes. Let's switch back to miter mode to look at the miter limit parameter. As we move these points to create a very obtuse angle, you'll notice that the corner is cut off, and that the point of this angle is truncated as it becomes more acute. When we increase the miter limit parameter value, we can reconstruct this point a little further. By increasing the miter limit value, the drawing will become increasingly precise and will require more and more calculations 
when reconstructing these points. Don't hesitate to increase this value depending on the angles your shape produces. Let's delete this rectangular shape and start again with a shape that we'll draw with the creation tool. To finish off, let's take a look at how this stroke is drawn along the path. The pen style defines the drawing mode. Here it's initially solid, but it can be switched to dash to generate dotted lines. The dash offset parameter lets you move these dotted lines along the path without having to modify the start and end parameters. Dash offset doesn't change the trim performed by these two parameters. Dot mode lets you draw dots that have an equal length and width. The number of dots and their spacing depends directly on the stroke width. The number of dots or dashed lines on the curve will depend on this parameter. Dash dot mode combines the two previous modes, dash and dot. Then we have dash dot dot, which will draw a dash followed by two dots. For even more control, custom pattern mode will open a new section where you can define your own sequence of elements. First, there's the dash length, which will define the length of the dash, then the space length, which will define the distance between two dashes. Dash offset is also compatible with this mode. This sequence can contain an unlimited number of patterns, and we can add a new element to this list by clicking on the plus button. Here we'll set this element's length and distance to double that of the previous element. Each element on this list can be reordered, deleted, or merged with new elements. Lastly, we can choose to set the stroke color in the default display space or in the working space. In this video, we went over how to adjust the different stroke style parameters to change its appearance, the way it's drawn, and its animation settings like time offset.